Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's, a, it's a great day. Good day. Amen. We, uh, we give praises to God and thank Him for this opportunity to be here. Um, since we uh, talked to one another in this city, there's quite a few people that have gone on the globe. Amen. 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 Right, a few people have been hospitalized. Uh, just a lot of things have occurred since the last time. Um, We've been here, and just in case we get too hard and caught up in ourselves, we're not here as a result of our goodness. Amen. We're not here because we, we did mm -hmm. and they didn't. Amen. Uh, we, uh, Amen. We're not here because we far exceeded them in kindness and all these other things, but it was by the grace of God Amen. that we're here. And so we give God the praise for that. Mm -hmm. And so as we get ready to start, I, I'm going to ask the deacon to give us a song and a prayer, and then we'll come back. We're, we're going to be dealing with... Uh, we're going to come to chapter 10 in the book of Revelation. Everybody should have a handout. I'm going to kind of just uh, deal with that handout for a few minutes before we go into chapter 10 because that's kind of uh, where we left off. And so rather than trying to teach you and going through a whole lesson and doing that, I just decided I would print that out so that you could see the, the steps. To, so we'll come back and explain what we put on that piece of paper so you can have a further clear understanding of what we we're trying to convey in that message. All right, I'm going to give us a song and prayer, and then you turn to chapter 10 of the book of Revelation, we'll be ready to come. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Yeah. Let's bereave 
Blessed ones that are sick and ailing, Father God, touch them with your finger of love. Heal them in a mighty way like only you can. Father God, and then bless our little ones. Keep your hedge of protection around them, Father God. Father God, and then bless our government. Bless our president. Father God, let them lead the greater people. Let them have wisdom to do the leading. Father God, and then bless our pastor. Uh, Let him say a word this uh, evening, Father God, uh, that burns uh, on all of our hearts. Uh, Lord, then bless New Jerusalem. Yes. Father God, we pray for that love that flows from heart to heart and rest and rest. Father God, again, we want to say thank you for thank everything you, that you do and everything yeah. that you've done for us, yeah. Father God. These are our best words in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Put your hands together. Let's give God a hand. Love Son Jesus the Christ and to the Holy Spirit and to all of y'all. It's a it's a good day. It's Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. I, don't, I don't know about this time. Though. If I had the power, I would reset this time back to when yes. I like it. I don't <laughs> like it this way, but it is what it is. But it's a it's just a blessed day to be here. Amen. Yeah. 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 I hope everybody had a everybody had a great day today. Amen. 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 The fact that you got up this morning, yeah. a great education. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No matter what you had to deal with, uh, yeah. it could not be worse than that. All right. Yeah. 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 The Lord bless you to be here. It's just good to be here. You know? yeah. I'm reminded when Jesus was on the mountain of transfiguration and Elijah and all of them showed up, and Peter spoke up and said, it's just good to be here. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So I said yeah. that to the it's just good to be here. Amen. Some people would say it would be good to be anywhere, but I'll, I'll differ with that. I'm very good to be here. And I've been, and I wasn't too happy about being here. But I'm certainly happy about being here tonight. Yeah. Amen. So give praises to God tonight. We thank Him for your uh, coming tonight. And you'll go ahead and turn to chapter 10 of the book of Revelation. That's where we're going to uh, eventually commence our uh, study for tonight. But uh, before we do that, I hope that everybody has already received the handout. Uh, let me have uh, uh, somebody find you one of the handout. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Um, hope everybody received the handout. Did everybody get one of these handouts? Yeah. Um, so that I might have so that I don't leave you hanging. I have, I have asked some people uh, to to uh, read for me uh, and we I think we only read one or two passages. So what I decided to do because we were ending that chapter on the fact that some had rejected after all that had transpired, some had rejected the word and they had not repented. And I thought, well, you know, that's that's a subject and a topic that we need. We can never get too much study about uh, right. repentance. And so, in this particular pat, in this particular handout, I, I gave you the definition and uh, I gave you two prerequisites of repentance, and I, I gave you the steps to repentance, and I told you the difference between being sorry and uh, repentance, and then I gave you some scriptures that were, uh, let you know that, that Jesus himself uh, sanctioned uh, repentance. Uh, real, real quickly, how many of you have seen, especially Hollywood people, or people that are, are stardom, people that are celebrities, uh, uh, say things, and they have to come back, uh, they get caught, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they get caught up in something, and they, they have these handwritten, uh, Long line uh, apologies. Mm -hmm. See, uh, I'm not trying to attack nobody, but true repentance is not something I have to write down. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm really sorry, I don't have to have a prepared statement. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm sorry, it comes from my heart. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so that we may know the fact, all of us in here, at some point, as you keep living, there will be some things that you will have to repent of. Amen. Yeah. So I just I just wanted to let you know there's there's four steps to repentance: being godly sorry, confessing our sin, turning from our sins with God help, because you can't turn from your sin without His help, uh, and you got to choose to live holy every day. Amen. And that's that in and of itself is quite a task because we hear what Paul said. I know better. Paul said, uh, when I desire to do good, uh, evil is always present. And, and then Paul also says, uh, uh, along with that, I find myself doing the very things that 
I know I shouldn't do that. Right? And so if Paul is guilty of that, I, I know I'm certainly in. I can't speak for you, but but if, but if I could, I, 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 I don't want to speak for you, but the reality is that we all find ourselves sometimes doing the very things that we know that we shouldn't do. Right. We find ourselves saying things that we shouldn't say. And uh, I talked about being sorry. You know, sometimes you can be sorry and I still not repent. Amen. I'm just sorry I got caught. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, some of, us, some of us would never say sorry if we didn't get caught red-headed. Mm-hmm. And, and we're living in an age where now you can see somebody on video get caught some, and they'll go in court or whatever and lie and say that ain't me or I didn't do that or whatever. But that's not what repentance is all about. So I provided this for you so if you ever need to know how to repent and what to repent and some scriptures there, I just want to provide that for you because... Uh, uh, there's going to be some things we're going to have to repent of before we get to heaven. Amen. 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 Everybody on their way to heaven? Amen. 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 Am
we more that we know that it denotes more than one individual. He says, let us create man in our image. Image. Plural. Our image. Plural. Okay? So we know that God was the God of the Old Testament. Jesus Christ came during the New Testament, and the Holy Ghost is now in the church age in which we live. There were diff different uh, dysphoria and dispensation. So God the Father was over the Old Testament. That was, even in the Old Testament, there were times that Jesus himself and the Holy Ghost them himself appeared even in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. right? And I wrote down a few of these times, uh, and you might want to write this down. <coughs> We've seen that one of those times was the appearance of Joshua in Joshua 5 and 13 and 15. We see Christ in that. Uh, we also get the appearance of uh, him to Jacob in Genesis chapter 32. Verses 22 through 31. We also see him visiting Abraham and Isaac in Genesis chapter 22, verses 11 through 18. We see him revisit jo uh, Jacob again in chapter 31 of Genesis, verses 11 through 13. We see him visiting Moses in Exodus 3, 2, and 6. And so what that word means is a visible manifestation. You remember when the, when the Hebrew boys was in the fire fern? They said we put three in. And when they looked again, there was a fourth one. And the, and the scripture said, it must be the Son of God, right? So even Christ was in the Old Testament, but he didn't come, per se, until the, into the New Testament. And when he brought, when he came, he brought grace and mercy. Because in the Old Testament, we were under the law. And there was no one that could live and abide by the law and get to heaven because all were guilty of breaking the law. Mm -hmm. right? Even after all of the sacrifices of all the bulls and all the lamb, men were still falling short. So what did Jesus come? He brought grace, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right? He brought mercy, right? Mm -hmm. Because without grace and mercy, we can't make it, right? Mm -hmm. right? right? So we are under, we, when he came, we were under grace. No longer was an eye for an eye and a two for a two and all that kind of stuff. We were not combined. We were not uh, 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 limited to the law because there, we couldn't be saved under the law, right? Right? Mm -hmm. We had to have somebody, the lamb, that's why they have kept having the sacrifice of lamb, to, for the, because it required blood for the atonement of sin. Right? So when that lamb fell, the, the ultimate lamb came, the lamb of God, which John said, the lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. And when that lamb shed his blood, hello somebody, his blood was more significant than the animal lamb. Right? And because of the shedding of his blood, we now have a right to eternal life. Right? 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 So, 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 it says, it was a mighty angel coming out. He was rolled in a cloud. That Clouds in Jesus is not uncommon. Clouds in God. Whenever God got ready to speak to, even in the book of Exodus, God used clouds, right? When he, when, he, when he got ready to lead the children, he led them by uh, a pillar of fire by night and by clouds by day, right? So clouds are, when Jesus comes back again, he's going to be riding on a cloud, right? You remember in the book of Acts, when he got ready to say farewell to the disciple, what, what did he do? He got on a cloud and went back where? To heaven, right? When he comes again, his taxi, his Uber, right, his... Uh, Whatever these, uh, his Uber, all, his Uber is going to be a cloud. Right. right. So clouds are significant, and they can be tied to God and Christ. Right. Right. right? When He comes again for the church, right? This is what I'm excited. When He comes to get the church and all that are dead in Christ, He's coming on a cloud. Right. right. Then we talk about the rainbow. Right. We know that the rainbow is symbolic of His mercy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he, he promised after he destroyed the world with water, right? He made a covenant, right, that he would never destroy the world again with water. With water. So every time we, it rains, depending on where you are, you should be able to see a rainbow. And they ain't always in the sky. Sometimes you can be walking on the ground and uh, you see a puddle and then have a rainbow. Right. That rainbow is a constant reminder uh, to us that God repented of the fact that he destroyed the world with water. Not because he did wrong, but he saw the devastation of what it is. So he said the next time it won't be by water, but it will be by fire. And uh, we know that his, 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 his face was like the sun because when he died, right, 
You remember when he died? Uh, you hear me say that the S-O-N is not just something I say because it sounds good and I don't have anything else to say. It's, it, it's, it's reality. The S-U-N, which, which abides, is the greater is the greater light by day and the moon will the lesser night by night. Uh, the sun, when the sun, when the S-O-N was dying on the prowl, the S-U-N uh, could not compete with the S-O-N, so he took a break because the S-O-N outshone uh, the S-U-N. Mm -hmm. right. 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 right, so we got that symbol. And his leg, because we also heard this same John, as he described Christ, he said his feet were like what? Fine grass. Mm -hmm. right. He didn't, have to, he didn't have to do no, his feet were so perfect and his legs were so perfect, he didn't have to do no atoning or none of that. It was all perfect, right? Mm -hmm. So all this is symbolic, but I want to make sure you understood it, who it is. This is Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. right? He's the first Amen. and the last. He's Alpha and, and, Omega. and Omega. He's the beginning and, and, the, and the end. end. Right? Mm -hmm. He was here before, he, he will be here after, right? Mm -hmm. John says in his gospel, in the beginning was the Word, right? Mm -hmm. and, the and the Word, word was, was with God. God. And the Word was God. God. Right? And by Him, everything that was made was made by Him, right? Right? Mm -hmm. So even in all of our ingenuity and all of our smarts and all of our knowledge, we, we, can't, we can't make anything because everything we made was already being made. We just come in time and made it. But everything that was made was made by him. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we take credit from God because we think we're smart. But every little bit of smart and, and knowledge we have, it comes from God. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My architect ability comes from God. My engineering skill comes from God. My accounting ability comes from God. Everything that I know is comes from God. How does it come? Because He gives me the knowledge to be able to comprehend what I read in a book. He gives me the knowledge to comprehend what I write on a piece of paper. So if He didn't give me that knowledge and that understanding, I would be just as lost as two left feet. So everything belongs to God. Every, all of the fascinating things of this world, if it had not been for God's ingenuity and his ability to disciple to us and disseminate us, the understanding, we could not make anything that we made because everything was made by him. He was the one who put the star in the socket. Because if we had put him there, we would have to go back and repair it. But anything we make, we have to repair it. You can buy a brand new car and two days later it's going to crank I wish I had somebody. All yeah, right. You know, a brand new house that they just built and nobody lived in it but you. And then you have to call an electrician out because when you cut this light off, this one over here is coming off. Right? right? And when God created and made everything and put it in place, no repairman. There is no God repairman. Everything when he made it, it was made right. Now, if it's messed up now, it's because you and I messed it up. Yeah. Right. Because you do know man is the most destructive force in the universe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can tear up, a, we can tear anything up, right? Mm -hmm. we, we know about that, right? We can yeah. tear up relationships, we can tear up houses, yeah. we can tear up marriages, we can tear churches up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Y'all get y'all. I don't know if y'all write this down, but we can, if we put our hands on it, we can tear it up, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You're right, Pastor. It's a brand new car, like it's a piece of junk. Amen. Amen. When we put our hands on it, right? So, uh, we just wanted to let you know who this was. And we'll talk about all these things that you see in his hand in just a moment. So, hit that, hit, let's go to verse, verse 2. The angel is Christ. Uh, Christ is eternal. Why right? he's doing that? Uh, we know that Colossians uh, 1 and 16 said, For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, where they be thrown to many principalities of power. All things were created by him and for him, right? Everything that God put here was made by him and for him, right? Amen. He created us. The whole purpose of, that he created us, according to Ephesians, he created us under good works, mm -hmm. right? And we're not really fulfilling ourselves or God until we give him the praise, right? Amen. He created us for the purpose of praising him. Yeah. Right? He didn't create us for ourselves, right? He created us for his purpose. He right. didn't create us because he didn't have nothing else in heaven to do, right? But he needed he needed somebody or something to praise him. So he created us under good works, right? He, he put us down here not to become idle. 
but he put us down here to do things that are productive and spiritual, right? And until you understand that, you'll never be fully complete, right? Amen. You can have all the money, the house, the prestige, power, all these things, and still be empty, right? Amen. Only when you fulfill your purpose and the means for which God put you here can you feel find fulfillment, right? Hello, somebody. That's why some people are still searching. They can't find happiness because there is no happiness and joy outside of God. Only when you come to know God in the free pardon of your sin can you really be fulfilled. Now, you said that, ain't, that ain't if, if, if you listen to the news, you'll find out the rich people, people that are billionaires and millionaires are killing themselves. Yeah. Right? You said, well, if I had all that money, I wouldn't kill myself. But that's not true. Because if you're missing God, if you don't have God, you ain't really got nothing. Right. Now that sounds corny to a brown. That's even for you say because you broke. You ain't got no million. Maybe if you had a million dollars, you wouldn't just talk like that. I'm gonna tell you something. If the more money you get, don't bring it don't bring happiness. Right. Not real happiness. It may it may buy you some friends that'll make you feel like you're happy. But then when they when you cross them, they're gonna cross you. They might kill you and take your money. But when you have God, when you have Jesus yeah. Christ as your person yeah. say, you got a plug that can fill that void in your life. Somebody know what I'm talking about. All right. I, don't, I don't want you to come out yourself out. But there's some people that, that know what I'm talking about, that you had you had it all. You had the housing, you had the money, you had the power, you had the prestige, you got the education, you got the know-how. You got all these things. But you would tell me today, Brother Brown, I, I never was completely fulfilled until I met Jesus. Amen. I had a good-looking husband. Every woman in town wanted him. I had a good looking wife, the men wouldn't stop following. But until I found Jesus, Amen. I was still missing something. Amen. Right. Amen. And, he, and, and the Bible said, and he had in his hand, Jesus did, a little book. Mm -hmm. right. We ought to keep in our hand a book. And the book that we ought to keep in our hand right. is the Bible. Right. 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 right? Yeah, we ought to have it with us tonight. We ought to have our Bible. Everywhere we go, we ought to take our Bible. Just like everywhere we go, we take our cell phone. Amen. <laughs> I don't go nowhere without it. Hello, somebody. Amen. And some of y'all know it. Some of y'all go to the restroom with it. Some of y'all go to the kitchen with it. <laughs> Come on. Amen. You right, Pastor. Because you got to tell everybody where you're at all times, right? Now, you leave on Sunday morning, and you'll leave your Bible. All right. And you won't go back in. But if you leave this telephone, Amen. you're going to turn around. How do I know that? Because when I used to go to Grapevine, see, I, you know, I, I ain't messing with y'all. When I used to go to Grapevine, I get so far down the road, I realized my phone was at home. Guess what I do? It, the sign is said, don't do no U-turn. And guess what I did? I U-turned, <laughs> and I went back and got it. Because Amen. guess what? Hello. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You yeah. don't leave. You, it's just like your master card. I mean, your uh, American Express. Don't leave home without it. Yeah. yeah. That's what they tell you in the story, right? Don't leave home without it. Because membership has privileges. That's what the American Express is. Y'all don't feel like y'all know what I'm talking about. All right. You ought to carry your Bible everywhere you go because you never know when you're going to encounter the enemy. Well, the Bible says the man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that come out of it. Your gun, you see, a lot of folks think we got guns, that's going to solve it. God, they can't, listen, guns don't solve everything. Because if they did, we still get people, people are still being killed. Yeah. They, they used to say, if we could all get a gun, we cut out on the mass killing. They're killing more folks now than just because they legal out of guns. Just because you have a gun, because see, when the man that know you got a gun, he ain't going to walk up to you and say, bang, bang, bang. He's going to catch you off guard because he know you got a gun. So he got to get you with his gun before you get him with his. Right, right. That's why I say if you if any of y'all license carry, if you got a gun, I ain't knocking that. But don't wear it around because if the enemy, if the man is robbing the bank and you in there with your gun, he's going to shoot you first. Amen. Long place, long place. Hello. He see that gun. He already spiked his. I'm about to kill this one first. Blow his head off. Because he's going to try to kill me. Listen, guns don't solve everything. Amen. Amen. Right. Guns do not solve everything. Right? So I just want you to know. And y'all keep that book. Keep the right book. Right? Keep your keep your Bible. Keep your purse, book, and your pocketbook. <laughs> keep that with you at all times. Because you never know when you're going to need them, right? Uh -huh. And don't just carry them empty. Have something in them, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was
And that's what made him amusing. He said, and he and 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 the little book opened, and he set it right foot on the seat, and his left foot on the earth. Now, what does that symbolize? That symbolizes that he is in control. Now, some of us, they come, we got a little power and a bit of authority that we are in control. Amen. But we are not in control. Any control that we have has been given to us by God. Amen. Now, let me tell you about what control does sometimes. Some people, Cannot handle power. Amen. Right. Right. What I've learned in three or four churches that I've been in, there are some people you cannot afford to put them in charge. Amen. Do I need a mic? Do I need a mic? Can y'all hear me? I'm gonna say it again. Now, in my four experiences in the church, there are some people. That is just is to the detriment of the church Amen. to put them in control. Right, right. Because when you put them in control, they go whack off. They allow power to go to their head. Now, let me break where you understand. How many of y'all work on the job or worked on the job, right? And you had people that you knew. You know them on a personal level, right? And as long as they were equal to you. Working in the craft like you, yeah, yeah. right? Taking long breaks like you and they were doing, right? Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Taking your break, your lunch was supposed to be 35 minutes. You had somebody clock you in at the 30th minute and you kept on eating, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, hello. I'm talking to somebody, man. Let me talk to everybody. But some of y'all laugh because y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, you get to work late and you have a friend to clock you in, all this kind of stuff. See, see what I'm saying? Now, when that same person got in charge, yeah. 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 They forgot about they were lazy. Mm -hmm. I know somebody. They forgot about they didn't come to work on time. Mm -hmm. they, they forgot about after the payday. The payday is on Friday. They missed Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And if they were like us at the post office, they got to the point where they wouldn't give you your check. I know somebody. If you called in Friday, hello somebody. You better have documentation when you come in Monday. Amen. Hello, somebody. But then those people get in charge. Now, every time you do a little something wrong, they're on top of you, right? Yeah. Right? And what I used to do, Brother Del Roca, <laughs> you, know, they, you know, they, if they want to carry me to the office, I'm just I'm keeping it real. First time I tell them, hey, hey, hey. Come on now, come on now. You remember when me and you used to? <laughs> You remember when me and you was out there under that tree and our break was over and you, you took your little power nap and I was coming for you? Don't forget, don't forget about it now, because, see, I still got it wrote down that you took a you, you took two hours in your car sleeping, right, when they were looking for you, and I, 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 hello, somebody. All right, All right now. I want, I, I want to bring it out, because, see, some of y'all know what I'm talking about, that's why you ain't opening your mouth. You know, they don't need to be saying that, because he got me pinned, he got me paid, right? But, but he had, and it's right, he, he took control. God is in control. Amen. Now let, let me encourage somebody. I know sometimes, let's, let's be honest, sometimes, sometimes we wonder whether God really is in control, right? Mm -hmm. Because we see so much happening, right? Mm -hmm. We see so many bad things. We see bad people seem like they're getting away with murder, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems like that, that God is absent, like God is not on duty, like God is just letting in and everything uh, happen. Well, let me tell you what Psalm 37 said. I think it was 137, I think 137, 37. It says, fret not. Yes. All right. yeah. All right. For evil do. Mm -hmm. For they shall soon be. Right? They're, they're only going to be in charge for a season, right? Mm -hmm. See, some folk think they're getting away. No, they're just getting by, but they ain't going to get away because God who sits high, who looks low, has got a record, right? And I know with the politicians, because, you know, some, you know I'm a, I feel human. Sometimes I'll be saying, you know, I don't try to sit God on my body, but I'll be saying, God, you know, you need to do something about that. But what I have to also remind myself is that God is aware. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in his own time, yeah. Yeah, he's going to rectify, right? Yeah. And sometimes God will allow ourselves to dig our own ditches. Yeah. 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 
I wish I had somebody. See, some of us, we're so slick and so smart and so common. Sometimes God will allow us to dig our own ditch. See, see, if you put a dog on a rope and he runs, you know, and he runs far along, and hard enough, he'll choke himself. Yeah. Hello, somebody. You ever see some of them, and they be running, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> well, you have, listen, you put him on that rope. He may do that three or four times, but I think the neck, I think he hit that neck a couple times. He'll stop that running and walk off. He know that at the end of that rope is going to choke his neck. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So sometimes God suffer in his permissive will. See, God has an ultimate will. Then he has what we call a permissive will. He will permit us to do something only to teach us a lesson. Okay, okay, you said that's horrible. Well, it's really not horrible because our parents did it to us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sometimes our parents would come up, and then sometimes they wouldn't send up, they just let us do it, right? Because the best way to learn a lesson is to, hello, to experience it for yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? I told you the story, and I don't mean to be caught, but my, I had my son, he just, he just, he, he, was, he was a little kid, and I get, I get tired of telling him, leave the oven alone. Leave it alone. Don't go over that. And he just was determined. Every time I turn my back, he's over. So I said, you know, I ain't going to hurt him. <laughs> I ain't going to hurt him. Because that would be child abuse, wouldn't it, y'all? Yeah. But that would be child abuse. Right. And y'all might call CPS on me, right? That would be child abuse, right? I said, but the only way I'm going to be able to teach him this lesson, Brother Dawson, I got to let him know that this fire do burn. Yeah. yeah. Right? In order to let him, I had to let him know the pig meat really is pork. Yeah. <laughs> Where you get all this stuff from? I don't know. I just, you know comes to me. But anyway, I, he just, he, I said, no, no. So I finally let so David, I let him touch that up. His mama wasn't there because she didn't have a fit I might, We might not have our marriage today. We might have no wife out there. But anyway, she wasn't there. But he hit that thing so hard, 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 So whatever the oven was on, he go like, he said, ha, <laughs> So sometimes God, it, it sounds funny, but sometimes God has to let us feel the heat from the fire in order to teach us a lesson. Right, right. right. Of the best lessons I've had learned are the lessons that I've experienced for myself. That's yeah. why I said sometimes you can talk to an addict, you can talk to a drunk, you can talk to whatever, and sometimes until they experience it for themselves, they'll never change. Yeah. Right. Now we all, let's be honest, we've all had somebody in our family that have had some substance abuse problems. Mm -hmm. Right? We have. I got some in your my family. You got some in your family. You may not claim them, but they're still your cousins. Yeah. <laughs> they're still your brothers. They're still your sister. You may be ashamed of them, but they're still your brothers and sisters. Right? And you can talk to them. You can preach the word of God. You can talk to them until they blew in the face, but until they get to rock bottom and get tired of living the way they are, you can not change them. That's right. right. Now what you can do, you can enable them by talking about, I'm going to give them two dollars, and, and, and Lord, have, Lord have mercy. I, I, I don't mean no attack on the women, but some of you women are the worst. Yeah. Well, hello. Oh, right. You enable. You, you become enablers. Mm -hmm. now, hello, somebody. Yeah. It's called tough love. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you have to let them hit that rock bottom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I told you, mothers will do it. Mothers will love their children to a fault. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, I know it because my mother loved my brothers to a fault. Yeah. 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 I ain't saying nothing that I told her. I used to be kind of, I used to kind of get a little obsessed. I said, well, mama, why is it that you spend so much time always with them and it seems like you don't spend no time with me? She said, well, you're strong. Yeah. Uh -huh. You don't need no time. You don't, you don't need no help. She said, I had to love her. Come on, y'all. You know, I'm human too, you know. Yeah. She said, why would I have to help you when you're already strong? I have to work, help burn the infirmity of the weak. And that's what your brothers are. They're weak. And they need my help when you don't. Hello, somebody. So they have to put me in perspective because, listen, so you decide to do right, can't nobody make you do right. Amen. So he's in control. How many of y'all know that he's in control, right? Amen. Amen. Right. Act like it. If you know it, act like it. Right? Amen. When you conduct your business, act like God is in control, right? Amen. Yeah. Right? You're not in control. I'm not in control. I'm the pastor, but I'm not in control. I take orders from God. 
Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Let me explain Amen. where we can get it. My order don't come from them. My order don't come from the deacon. My order don't come from the trustee. My order don't come from the church. My orders come from God. Amen. 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 And whatever God tell me to do, if I'm clear that that's what he told me, because I'm going to make sure it's him, because if it ain't him, I'm going to hit boo-boo. <laughs> I'm going to Flunksville. Right. But I'm going to make sure that it's his voice, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to take what he said and take his word and see if it lines up with his word. If it lines up with his word, I know it's his voice. Right. If, it's his, if I hear a voice and it ain't lining up and it's contrary to what's in that, in that Bible, I ain't doing it, because there ain't no way in the world God is going to contradict himself, because he's incapable of lying. He ain't going to tell me one thing and then tell me something in the book. I hear folks come out, God said, well, what did the, God, well, God ain't telling a lot of the stuff that we said God is telling us. He ain't telling us this stuff, because it don't line up with his word. All right. All right. God don't tell me to do my brother wrong because they don't line up with his word. His word told me to do unto others as I would have them to do unto me. Right? Yeah. right? God don't tell me to talk, talk crazy to people because God said if, 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 if those who are in the household of faith we ought to be especially kind to, right? Yeah. I hear this. So I just want to make sure we understand that. Here's again. A big angel. This angel is mighty in his call because he's Jesus. He is the first, the last. He was in the beginning. He's in the end. Okay. He's now, where is he now? He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Right? Right? Making intercession. Right? On our behalf. He is our advocate. Right. You know what an advocate does? An advocate looks out for you when nobody else is looking out for you. Right? An advocate is somebody who's advocating for your cause, right? So that's what he does. Now, you know that uh, in, the, in the New Testament it talks about uh, that he has been given, and Philippians said that he has been given a name, right? Because of his faithfulness and willing to die, he has been, he has been made equal to God because of his sacrificial sacrifice, right? And he has been given a name that, that is greater than any name. And at the, at the sound of his name, every knee will die, right? There you go. Right? So now, because of his dying and because of his shedding his blood, right, God has given him total control. Because when he got up that Sunday morning, he said, all power. Uh -huh. Somebody... Just restrain yourself. Just restrain yourself. Don't get too happy about this. But he said, all power is where? In, in my hand. Right? Because of the sacrifice that I made for humankind. Right? So he said, and he called out with a, what kind of voice? Yeah. Like a lion. Ruin. That lion, he, I don't know if he, what he'd be doing, but, but I, I was listening one other day. He said, oh. And then he'll let out a roar. Roar. You know? And everything in the jungle hears him. Right? And they know that he's on the prowl. Yep. Hello, somebody. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. he, when he opens, any of y'all ever heard a lion roar? Yeah. I mean, he, 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 and then makes that big old roar. But he, he, he's letting them, he's warning them. Right? Right? Warn, right? That's the good thing I love about God. He warns us. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. He tells us that we don't live right, we don't die right, Amen. that we have a, a burning hell we're going to. Amen. God is not going to allow us to go to hell without us want, being warned, right? Amen. Right? Thank God for the warning system. Uh, not too long ago, we, we had some winds blowing. And, and, and we, in our city of Tyler, we have what they call uh, the, the tornado warning system, right? Amen. Now, when you hear that system, Unless they told you it was a drill, that's not a time to just hang out. <laughs> right? If you hear it go off, that's not a time to have a party or to gather up. That means what? That's a warning that impending danger is coming, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, 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 let me tell you something. I'm, I'm a watchman. If you read uh, Ezekiel 33, uh, God has appointed me as a watchman. All right. right? It's my job. To sound the alarm. Right. right? If you're sitting here on Sunday morning 
and uh, at, at the uh, long law, that, that don't mean we should sit, continue to sit here and do this. That means it's time to find the exit, right? Yeah. Now, you can sit here and continue to do that, but if that long is called and says this building's on fire, I'll see you, uh, maybe I'll see you in heaven. <laughs> maybe I'll see you in heaven. You stand there while this building, I'll see you on the other side. Uh, some of y'all will see outside, but some of y'all will see on the other side. You stand there. <laughs> Because so that thing is designed to warn us. Yeah. I'm trying to make a point. You know, I put a little this in there to kind of keep it straight. But it's designed, what do warnings do? It lets us know that there is impending danger and we need to make an adjustment so that we can be well suited for the danger that is coming. Right? I'm an animal fan. Still do, I got no tape. I'm an animal fan of Lost in Space. Mm. Will Robinson, John Robinson, and Penny Robinson, and all of y'all said, God, man, what is he talking about? And they had a robot. Y'all remember the robot? And that robot was designed to protect the Robinson family. And every time something would happen, that red robot stick his arms up. He said, danger, 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 right? I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, but I'm trying to get you to get this stuff. Maybe, maybe you can understand it. He'd swing his arm, but that was to tell the family to take note that danger's coming. So guess what? As a watchman, right, as a warner, it is my job to warn you that impending danger is coming. So every Sunday morning, I'm blowing the trumpet, telling you that the wedges of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life. Every chance I get up, right, even tonight, I'm sending out a warning. Some of y'all ain't paying me no attention, but when it all hits the fan, then it's going to be too late. Yeah. 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 Right? They're telling us it's going to be short. Somebody's going to wait till the last minute to try to go get You know how you do. You wait till the ninth hour. You should have. You can pass the door 900 times. You knew you need water. And now they ain't got the five cases. Now y'all pushing and shoving when you should have got some when it was plenty. Right. Right. Now you're going to go about to five cases. It ain't but five in there. You could have had 55 cases if you'd have been buying some a little car. They've been telling you all along. But now you push me out of the way. And now we fighting. And while we fighting, somebody else got another five cases and gone. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So he called out with a loud boy. It was like a roar. And when he had called out, when he, when he called out, it started thundering. Matter of fact, seven thunders. Seven being the number of. I don't know about y'all, but thunder scares me. You're such a, you're such a scurdy cat, Brian. You just, everything's scary. You're just old scurdy cat. Thunder and lightning scares me. All right. Because I know that that's not an act of man, that's an act of God. And I would, I would suggest to you, you do whatever you want to, that when it's thunder and lightning, that you get somewhere and you sit down. And pray to be quiet. Yeah. If you're on your lawnmower, don't be an idiot and continue to mow when it's thunder and lightning. Get off that iron trap. Because yeah. you might get a charge you don't need. Yeah. Yeah. No. Right. I see people in lightning flashing folk out there on, on John Deere. I guess they call they said they on the deer. It don't matter. But I don't care if you're on the deer. I don't care if you're on whatever. If that lightning and that thunder, you better get some weapon. Uh, my mama didn't have much education, but she had sus enough to say that when it's lightning and thunder, God is working. And when God is working, we need to be still. Yeah. yeah. Right. So my daddy used to say that. Yeah. Boy, it's so I want to tell you, boy, she can be sleeping. But if it's called lighting and thunder, boy, listen, I, 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 listen, I get nervous. <laughs> that wind get the blow, and she's in there, she just, you know, in there putting her makeup or whatever, she's just sweeping, it's all just content. I'm, I'm, I'm in the <laughs> All right. You can say, pull me all you want. <laughs> I'm trying to heat the water, y'all. Right, and when he had called out seven thunder. <laughs> See, when God speaks, he's greater than he of us. 
God knows how to get our attention. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God knows how to get our attention. He can He can send things our way to let us know that there is a God. Right? He can allow calamities. We are at God's mercy. We are at God's mercy. We can't slow the wind down. We can't make the rain stop. We can't seal the earth and keep it from cracking. Mm -mm. We can't put a top on a volcano. Mm -mm. We can't do anything. We are at the mercy of God. Amen. Right? And when he that work, there is no man that can hinder God. Right? Amen. All of the nuclear power that we have in America and all of these all these missiles and the silo all over the land and country cannot stop God. Right? Amen. You can fire them at God. And God will be just like Superman, just hitting them. You know how in the Superman commercials, how Superman be hitting those. Y'all ever seen Superman in the cartoon? They be shooting at him with missiles and take his hand. Or even in the river, just slap him down. But greater than multiply that time to eternity. Amen. That's how powerful God is. Amen. All right, let's move on. And the seven thunders. All right, verse 4. It says, and the seven thunders. And when the seven thunders had uttered, he had uttered their voices, John said, I was about to write. Mm -hmm. He said, I was about to write. But I was warned, this is one of the mysteries. Because we don't know what the mysterious thing about these seven thunders. Mm -hmm. I've looked in every commentary. I've looked in every book that I have. John Phillips, uh, uh, Jack Van Am, all these books. Nobody can tell me what the meaning of these seven thunders by in fact, John was warned. He was getting ready to write, but what, what it said, I was about to write, mm -hmm. but I heard a voice. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And where did I hear it from? Heaven. heaven. So whenever heaven is talking, we ought to be listening. All right. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so John said, I was, I was about to record this great event because I wanted everybody to know and to try to get But he said, I didn't understand and I was instructed to do what? To be quiet. Mm -hmm. to, not to write. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? He said, keep secret. What the thunder... John heard it, but he couldn't tell us. Mm -hmm. Right? See, John... Good thing about John, he wasn't like a lot of us. We were like bad refrigerators. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, listen. I'm going to tell you something like... If it's something you want somebody to know, there's some people you can tell. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now they may not always tell it right because sometimes they get crossed up. Oh, no. They said it was seven frog, they said they saw uh, they, they, they said it said seven frog, they saw a frog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but John was under the influence, let's keep in mind that he was under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Because yeah. ever since the beginning, when he said it was on the Lord's Day, let's not, let's not forget that at the beginning he described being on the Lord's Day in the, caught up in the Spirit of God, and he's still under that same influence, right? Yeah. So when the, when the voice from heaven, which is probably God, right? Because who's sitting in heaven? God. The Father, right? And he spoke and said, Don't, John, don't write anything. All right? Don't don't let the, the rabbit out of the hat. Don't let the secret out. In time, I will reveal unto men what this means, right? Because we have a Bible. It's a basic instruction before leaving. Listen, we if we live here as long as Methuselah lived, we would never fully understand what the Bible is saying. Amen. You can read it. Anybody here? Uh, let me let me congratulate you. Is there anybody here that have read the Bible completely all the way through? Anybody? Let me go ahead. But they're no smarter than the rest of us. Because every time I read it, I get something different out of it. And just in case, let me just go ahead and give this a credit. If I come in here and preach the same sermon, whether it be by accident or by choice, don't say, well, you know, the pastor already preached that. He preached that last week. Guess what? This week, the Lord gave me that same sermon, but he gave me something new to say about it. Amen. Because his word is refreshing. Yeah. Right? His word, I can take one scripture and talk all day. I can take one verse and talk to you for hours and hours at a time and not say the same thing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right? So it said, it said, keep sacred and do not write it down. Right? 
Do not write it down. Now, if that been one of us, <laughs> that been one of us. <laughs> now, who would have been telling? <laughs> he said, "Don't write it down. That's my cue. Write down. If I don't keep it for nobody but for my record." Yeah. But he said, "Don't write it down." Right? And when God says something, He means what He said. He said what He means, and He means what He said. So he said, don't write it, right? It's a mystery, right? We'll, we'll, we'll understand it better, by it. Well, one someday, from, from God command that this be kept a secret because he don't want man to be confused. Right. I think I'm a pretty smart guy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you see me in the office, I got a kudos for you back there. <laughs> she's doing that, you just pile up. I got to go to the video now. Yeah. But as small as I think I am, I don't know everything. Amen. 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 I thought y'all, you know, when I talk about myself, that was, that's y'all time to chime in. You know, without yeah. me being on the fence of the body, y'all should say amen. amen. Uh, I'm small, but I don't know everything. Amen. Right? And if I live a thousand years, I still won't know everything. Amen. But I will tell you this, I do know enough to get to heaven. I do know enough to get saved. I do know enough to know that he that he died for my sins. I do know enough to know that he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. I do know enough that when I'm in trouble to look to the hill for where to my God. I do know that when I'm in trouble that he is a very present help in the time of trouble. Y'all know right. I do know that in the beginning he created the heavens and the earth. I do know that in the end he's coming back for a trip and I'm a I I do know that there will be a rapture and that the dead in Christ shall rise first. I do know that there is a mystery that we shall not all sleep, that we shall be trained in the twinkling of the night. I do know that. I may not know biology. I may not know engineering. I may not know astronaut. But I do know those things. I'm smart enough to know that if I die in the Lord, henceforth I labor do follow me. That's what I do know. Right. I'm not as small and happy out of here, but I do know those things. Yeah. Right. And the people that don't know those things are not very smart at all. Yeah. Right. So you can know all about botany and all this other stuff, but if you don't know about Jesus, yeah. if you don't know Jesus one-on-one, -on -one, you don't know that. Amen. Right. 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 Now, <coughs> then again. Now, now listen. This is not your saying. This is not gospel. This is not something I heard through the kinky head cassette. Right? This is not something I heard from a shuttle lip that will say anything. But this is, this is a first person narrative. John indicates to us that everything that he's writing about, he witnessed. All right. right. Uh -huh. I told you something I cannot witness to because I have not experienced it. I've had people that come to me with problems in some of my previous church, and I'm just be honest, I said, well, listen, I don't really know, but what I'll do, I'll make a phone call for you, mm -hmm. and I'll keep you anonymous, I'll keep you anonymous, I, you know, I won't tell you what you said, but I would prefer to direct you to somebody who can really help you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's a certain amount, so David, that's a certain amount of generality thing mm -hmm. that I can help you with, Amen. but there are some things that's more specific that I'm not well versed in, so then I have to refer you to somebody, uh, defer you to somebody that know. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have a substance abuse problem, I've never been on drugs. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I know the general things about drugs, but I don't know the specific. Mm -hmm. So I would send you to somebody who is a reco recovering addict. Amen. And they'll be able to help you because they know all the things that go on in the lives of an addict, right? Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times we think we know so much, and sometimes we do more harm yeah. to people yeah. because we don't know. Right. Oh, yeah. And we're not we're ashamed to admit that we don't know something, right? Mm -hmm. But if I don't know it, if you come to me, Brother Dawson got a problem, and I don't know, listen, I'm going to just look, let me, as your pastor, because I do owe you an obligation, as your pastor, let me get you into some counseling, preferably a Christian counselor that can handle what you're going through, because I can't. Now, what I will do, I will be here to aid you. I will be here to help you. If, even if I have to go with you to your meetings or whatever, I can do that. But I just don't know. Right. Now, say I don't know, y'all. Yeah. Did it hurt? 
No. We do these exercises every week so we can formulate our mouth and get our job on and our, all right, right? so we can say it don't hurt the Sunday because I don't know everything. Right? Mm-hmm. So if you come to pass and you got a problem and pastor said, well, I'm going to defer you to somebody else, don't get mad at me. Be happy that I had sense enough to, to really help you by helping you to send you to somebody that you can help, right? How many of y'all got medical doctors? How many of y'all see a medical doctor? I saw one yesterday. How many of y'all, when your, when your medical doctor, see your medical doctor is just a medical doctor. When your arm is broke or your leg is broke or your hip back is shut, they don't work on your back, do they? They send you to a what? A surgeon, right? Right? Because they don't know how to work on back, right? They know a lot of generalities about back, but as far as putting your vertebrae back together, they don't know. So what do they do? They hand you off to somebody that can help your back, right? Right. right. So as a preacher, sometimes I have to do the handout, right? Because I don't know, right? Now, I will promise you, and I'll get back to that, I will promise you that whatever you come to me with stays with me. Amen. Right? I do know how to keep a secret. And I do know how, how, how I'm not going to betray people's confidence. And let me just say that whenever a member, I just want to say this real quick, because whenever a member thinks enough of that pastor to come to them and talk to him one-on-one, you don't ever want to do anything to ever betray that trust. Amen. All right? Because once you lose people's trust, you've lost it. Amen. There are some things that you tell me that my wife is not privileged to. Because you, if you don't want my wife to, you can call me and her in the office, right? right. Yeah. Yes, come on now. Come on. And, and, and brethren, something that we hear at the church ain't privileged for our wives. Why? Something we hear at the church ain't privileged for our right? Because it was given to us in a specific context, right? And we need to keep it in that specific context, right? Because what you do, you betray people's confidence, and now they fall out with the church. Now they're mad at all of us because they say they can't keep no secret on it, and they don't do nothing but put your business out at New Jerusalem. They ain't going to say that the brother Dotson did it. The New Jer- they going to put us all together. Them big girls in New Jerusalem can't keep nothing. Right. That's what they're gonna say, because you know you you know that's what they're gonna say. Just keeping it real. Just keep it real. Don't get right. offended. Don't get offended at all. Let's let and 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 he's standing on the seat and he raised he on the land, he raised his right hand, right? Because that's where his power is in his right hand. Right? When God started raising his hand, stuff start, started happening. Amen. Hit, hit that button again. Let me see. Go back, go back, go back. So he raised that right hand toward heaven. Mm-hmm. All right? This is him. He feet signed for that freedom. Now, the Bible teaches us about swearing. I got it because I'm over my time. Let me just make this point with this slide real quick. The Bible teaches us about swearing. I swear, you know, when I was a little boy, you know, when I wanted to make somebody think I was really telling the truth, I swear, I swear to God, I, I, I swear by my mama's grave. Right. Right. Yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. Absolutely. The Bible teaches us that we're not supposed to swear because we don't have anything to swear by. Right? That's why when you go downtown, instead of them sw- saying, you swear to tell the truth, you promise to tell the truth, right? Because that's in violation. It says, and he swear by him that liveth and liveth forever. Jesus makes an oath, right? Now, you know what an oath is, right? Mm-hmm. Whenever you make an oath or a vow, you're supposed to go by what you say, right? Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of us have lied to God. <laughs> And told God, if you get my son out of trouble, if you get me out of trouble, if you give me a weekend job, give me a car, uh, this is our favorite thing, give me a weekend job, give me a car, I'm going to church every Sunday. You go by the church every Sunday, but you never come into church every Sunday. <laughs> All right? So you had you, you, you have way told the truth. You told God you were going to church. Jesus, let me get off on the weekend. I've heard many people pray. Pastor, pray for me to be off on the weekend. I've been praying. Lord, help me to get off on the weekend. And then they tell me off, they off on the weekend. And they, they don't know. And I, go, I go back and say, God, please make them work on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... All right, we're going to stop right now. I'll finish the chapter. Anybody got any questions? Rewind back out that. Listen, this has got to be this stuff has got to be a job. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the word of God, right? Right. Right. Uh, we wanna we wanna we wanna is anybody got any questions? We wanna we wanna we wanna uh, my, my my grandmother and uh, brother uh, Chris 
I want to, want to lift them up in prayer tonight, Brenda and her, her grandbaby, and uh, other others that we need to, before we go. Uh, the Freeman family. The, yes, right. The uh, family. The Freeman family. My very good friend, brother Jerry, lost his son. Are there any other families before we pray for we before we get out of here? Praying for you, you pray for me. Uh, next next Wednesday, we will not have Bible study because that's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And we're going to allow you to be with your family. But for those of us that tune in at 12 on, on Wednesday, we will have prayer that day and that we will designate that as our Thanksgiving prayer for that 12 o'clock hour. And we're going to allow you to be with your family. Yes, ma'am. I have a friend, she's very only child on Saturday. Only child. Okay. So we lift you up in the way. Somebody else has seen the other hands. Okay, let us, let's go to the throne. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this time that we have spent uh, bonding in your word. Yes. Uh, we thank you for the reception and the cooperation and the inspiration that we've received from this congregation. Yes. Yes. We thank you, O oh God, that we have touched and agreed on your word. And you said, well, we're agreeing and touching uh, in the same place that you would be in the midst. And I felt your presence. I felt your power. Uh, now, Father God, as we come, we, uh, we don't know all the names specific. But every name that has been uttered, every situation that has been made known for here tonight, mm -hmm. we pray now, God, that you would, uh, you know the ins and outs of it. You know the particulars more so than the persons that have presented it. You know the cause and you know the effect. Mm -hmm. And so right now, we ask that you would just touch right now. Mm -hmm. Heal those who need to be healed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, console those who need consoling. Mm -hmm. uh, lift those who have been torn down mm -hmm. and inspire those who have lost their inspiration. And then, Father God, as we leave this place, we ask that you, that you would dismiss us from this place, but never in our presence. As we go out, uh, we don't know what's lurking out there, and we don't know who's out there waiting on us. But we pray that you would give us traveling grace yeah. from this place to our place of abode. And when we get there, the first thing we do before we left the garage, before we open the door, before we disalong the alarm system, we will tell you thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.